Hi friends, I'm Yamini Sharma and I welcome you back to my astrology channel, The Saffron Box. Today I'm going to be talking about the stay of Mars in the sign of Taurus. So now this time around, Mars uh, is going to be staying in the sign of Taurus for a pretty long time. So today, that is the 10th of August, Mars enters Taurus. And by the time it finally exits Taurus, uh, though in between it does move on to the next sign of Gemini, it also becomes retrograde. So that happens only for a few days. But Mars, by the time it finally exits out of the sign of Taurus, is going to be 13th of January 2023. So there's a period of about five months where Mars is going to be actively impacting the sign of Taurus and a bit of Gemini as well. So I'm going to be talking about that today and of course I'll also talk about uh, what is the impact of this particular stay of Mars in the sign of Taurus on all of us. So you've got to be uh, checking your ascendant, you can check your moon sign and understand the impact as well. So before I begin also as usual if you haven't subscribed do subscribe to my channel if you have uh, liked the content do give me a thumbs up to give me a do press the like button and share the content with your family and friends and people who are interested in the field of Vedic astrology in the field of Vedic Jyotish right so let's understand the uh, you know planet Mars and how is it going to impact or affect the sign of Taurus now so to uh, understand this first of all let's understand that Mars is a fiery planet Mars has been assigned the role of Senapati or commander-in-chief in the planetary cabinet so it does what the Sun is telling us uh, it's uh, is telling it right so Sun is the king Mars is the Senapati right and uh, Mars will do whatever has been told mars uh you know has the duty has the responsibility to defend to uh, protect so mars is the karka of uh, bhumi mars is the karka of your younger siblings your brothers in particular okay so mars uh, rules over the army the defense the police so what do all they what do all these people do they defend whatever is supposed to be defended what what is supposed to be protected so the job of protection lies with mars mars also rules our desires remember that the first sign in the zodiac is of aries so the time you know the uh, our journey our journey in the physical body in the stool sharir starts with Aries the first house I'm talking about the natural horoscope over here and eighth house Scorpio is Ayu is age longevity our death death of the physical body so Scorpio is also ruled by Mars so from the beginning till the end while we are in this Bhautik Sharir while we are in the physical body Mars is the planet to go for. Mars creates that desire to uh, do things, to carry on through the journey of life. And by the time the desire ends, life ends. So that entire journey, you know, Mars is a very important planet as such. If Mars is not there, there'll be no energy, there'll be no drive to do anything, there'll be no willpower to uh, achieve whatever we want to. So the fieriness of Mars brings in that vitality in us, brings in that uh, determination in us to carry on things. So it is that abundant energy. How that energy is directed is again dependent on how your moon is, how your sun is, how the rest of your chart is. But Mars is in charge of that energy, is in charge of that, uh, you know, uh, that potential which you have otherwise if we look at our body Mars rules over blood our muscles so how do we exercise this physical body how do we go about how do we sit how do we stand how do we walk it is with the help of the muscles it is with the help of the blood circulation so Mars rules over blood 
right so mars is very very vital to us and wherever mars is placed in our chart is also a very vital area it helps us understand how do you utilize your energy which part of your life is taking up the maximum energy so one thing which you need to understand before understanding any transit of uh, mars is please look at what does mars uh, rule in your chart okay so see where the sign of aries where the sign of scorpio is in your chart also then keeping in mind this particular transit you've got to understand where is taurus so mars is going to be entering the sign of taurus so now mars with that fiery energy with that uh, you know with that bag of bundle of fieriness he is going to come out of the sign of aries and entering taurus now in uh, aries mars was conjunct with rahu so mars and rahu conjunction that mangal rahu conjunction was causing that angarak yoga as well that too in a fiery sign of aries so there was a lot of impulsiveness there was a lot of uh, you know lot of us took actions without thinking through acted on impulse so i'm not talk talking about everybody i'm talking about majority of us at some point uh, or the other we would have taken actions without thinking through so impulsive actions but here when mars is coming out of the grip of rahu mars is entering the sign of taurus mars gets a very stable ground so all that impulsiveness all that uh, you know uh, quick energy which it has sobers down a little why because the sign of taurus is a fixed sign it's an earthy sign it's a laid back sign also because it's a fixed sign so here what happens mars is sobering down a little it gets a little more patient it helps you ponder a little more deliberate a little more over the kind of actions which you want to do so that action is kind of restrained so now before uh taking any action before acting on impulse you get some time you get those 5 seconds to think that okay is this particular action okay am i doing the right thing or not so that kind of energy is uh, what mars generates in the sign of taurus and remember taurus is ruled by venus and mars and venus are not friendly towards each other so it doesn't venus does not bother if mars is coming into into its sign so there's a kind of neutrality uh, not enmity as such also but uh, it's it's a neutral kind of a position not a very positive position but yeah neutral so here you also need to see where venus is and here mars is going to be entering the sign of kritika entering the nakshatra of kritika which is sun's nakshatra and then from kritika it will go to rohini then uh, from rohini it will go to mrigshira so kritika is owned by sun rohini is owned by moon and mrigshira the last part of the sign of taurus mrigshira comes under mars itself so here it's going to be transiting through the nakshatras of friendly planets sun moon and then finally its own its own nakshatra so this energy gets stabilized when it enters the sign of kritika one can be a little more rash because kritika as you know we know it's a uh, it's a fierce nakshatra kritika's job is to cut cut like a knife so here when it enters the uh, sign of taurus in the nakshatra of kritika the energy could be still uh, that fears a fiery energy which it has but by the time it transits through goes on to the rest of the two nakshatras it sobers down a little so there's a lot of transformation in the martian energy which we'll see right and when it comes to the sign of taurus taurus remember is the sign of uh, it's it's an artha sign 
it's a sign of uh, speech of our family of our moral values of our primary education what does our family teach us what kind of moral upbringing do we have our food intake our right eye part of our face so here the energy or the uh, you know the focus is going to be on all these areas how do you accumulate your wealth what kind of savings do you have what do you do with your savings so all these areas are going to be uh, important mars will uh, put in a lot of energy over here and remember wherever mars goes there is an influx of energy so the sign of taurus irrespective of wherever it is these are the areas where particularly you know your family food finance speech all these things are going to be important but the good part is that mars is out of the rahu ketu axis it is not going to get conjunct with any malefic in particular throughout its transit right and uh, though uh, one more thing which is very important about it uh, about this particular transit is that uh, saturn is going to be in trine with mars so mars is going to be in the sign of taurus and ninth from it uh saturn is transiting in the sign of capricorn capricorn is a very important sign for mars it exalts over there and whenever any planet comes in trine it puts an effect and saturn is going to be in the nakshatra of dhanishtha over there as well dhanishtha is a mars nakshatra so saturn's impact is also going to come so that slowing down uh, that uh, deliberation in your action is going to be seen so this energy overall to sum it up i would say that this energy is going to make us slow down a little uh it's a relief uh from all that fierceness from all that hastiness which mars was in till now in the sign of aries with rahu and here uh, you know you get a, a better chance to deliberate over your actions to bring in changes gradually so uh this is also an important uh, uh transit when it comes to uh you know your land uh dealings your property dealings mars is a bhumi karaka as well and uh, being a bhumi karaka in the sign of venus in the sign of taurus of accumulation a lot of focus could also be on land and property etc uh one more thing about the aspect of mars is mars is going to be in the sign of taurus from where with its fourth aspect it is going to be aspecting the sign of uh, leo uh, with the seventh aspect uh, it is going to be aspecting its own sign of scorpio and then with the eighth aspect it's going to be aspecting the sign of sagittarius so again uh, sun mars and jupiter aspecting its friendly signs as well So now I'm going to be talking about the impact of this particular transit of Mars uh on all the 12 ascendants on all the 12 signs. So I'll begin with Aries. Uh so for Aries uh, if you have an Aries ascendant, Aries rising or Aries moon sign for that matter, uh you can understand the impact. And for you uh Aries uh, the ascendant lord Mars is the ascendant lord itself and now it is moving out of the ascendant into the second house second house of family finance speech food uh your values etc your assets so here from here uh Mars is going to be impacting the uh 5th house the 8th as well as the 9th house so the impact in general is going to be uh on your relationships with your family the first thing which you need to keep in mind is your speech the tone the tenor with which you speak within your family the kind of uh, conversation or speech uh you use with your in-laws if in case you are married if that qualifies in your case so remember do not uh you know be harsh in your speech it's better to just keep quiet sometimes rather than rendering your opinion so that is something which you have to be careful about uh you need to be also very uh careful about how you're going to be managing your 
finances so for some of you there could be chances of speculative gains you might earn from speculative gains from uh, the stock market etc new ways of investments could also come in there could be a change or there could be a diversification in your portfolio which you which you might like to make right now at this point in time there could also be a lot of emphasis on your relationship with your uh, teachers with your gurus uh, a very good time for those who are uh, seeking higher education opportunities because both the houses of higher education are getting impacted in case you want to move out of your motherland of your home your hometown uh, move out to seek higher education this is a wonderful time to do so a lot of family support can also come in your way right so uh, finances is something which is going to be a focal area and of course the way you speak with people it is going to be very important uh, do take care of your food intake a lot of you might uh, look at uh, consuming a lot of hot and spicy food which may not turn out to be very good for your health in the long run then i move on to the next uh, sign of taurus now for taurus uh, this uh, particular transit of mars is happening in your first house so mars is coming into your first house and impacting your fourth house your seventh and your eighth house so here i would say that one it's a welcome break for taurus ascendant to have mars out of your 12th house into the first first house though mars is not a very good uh, planet for you as such but uh, here with that martian energy coming into the ascendant there is going to be a lot of increase in your energy in your drive in the way you look at things uh, positivity can come in you feel more equipped to take care of your opposition take care of uh, your competition etc so uh, that is the good part about this energy but at the same point in time you also face a lot of competition so if you are in a, a field where uh, you know there's a lot of uh, competition day to day on a day to day basis uh, i think this is going to be a very active few months ahead of you right and uh, there is going to be a lot of uh, action in terms of your business in terms of your uh, you know if if you are earning out of commissions if you are earning out of you know you have a daily turnover which you depend on this is going to be a very important time so make sure that your paperwork your legal agreements etc are in place your relationship with your partner is also taken care of well the same applies with uh, your relationship with your spouse so take care of your spouse your spouse's uh, finances there could be decisions uh, regarding finances which uh, your spouse may be uh, busy with may be engaged with uh, please keep a check on that take care of your spouse's health as well that is very important but for some of you there is also going to be a good time to strike a deal uh, related to land related to property maybe a sale or purchase of uh, a good piece of land uh, which suits you so uh, there i see some positivity as well coming in i move on to the next sign of gemini uh, for gemini mars is leaving your 11th house coming into the 12th and from the 12th house it aspects your third house aspects your 6th house as well as your 7th house so two of the malefic houses the third and the sixth are being aspected by mars as such from the 12th house sitting in the 12th house it also aspects a marka bhav that is the 7th house not a very bright uh, transit i would say it could be uh, a little difficult for you take care of your health take care of your health while traveling abroad uh, your daily routine your daily food intake also needs to be taken care of uh, your health uh, may bring in extra expenditures uh so uh, you'll have to maybe shell out a little more uh, or there could be sudden expenditure because of health issues so the idea is to take care of your health in case you have any hormonal issues that is again something which you need to be uh taking care of a lot of you uh, might also look at uh, a final resolution final solution to any ongoing conflict which you had 
a legal conflict or a uh, you know property related uh, conflict etc so a lot of uh, you know active time ahead which i see for you with regard to uh, conflict resolution with regard to agreements a lot of paperwork a uh, lot of expenditure on the legal as well as the medical front so whatever applies to you i see a lot of uh, time and energy being spent here this is though a good time to take up new initiatives as well so if uh, you are in that agent stage where uh, some kind of a new responsibility is coming up for you i think this is a time to take on shoulder more responsibilities it could be a responsibility in terms of you know taking care of your sibling taking care of uh, extended family or uh, some extra responsibility towards your spouse as well so uh, this is a mixed uh, transit for you responsibilities and lot of action on lot of important fronts then i move on to the next sign of cancer now for cancer mars is a yoga karak planet for you and it is uh, coming out of your 10th moving on to the 11th house and from there it aspects your second house or aspects the 5th uh, house as well as the 6th house so here i would say overall there is a lot of influx of energy in what you do you get a little more ambitious regarding your material goals uh, how you want to go about your investments how you want to take care of your money is something which is going to be a focal area for you uh, plans for your future plans for your kids for your children so a lot of energy will also be spent over there a lot of time resources will also be spent over there this is an excellent time to do so as well so make sure that your long term goals are uh, achievable you are realistic you are able to chart out measurable goals for yourself and uh, not be too ambitious so generally what happens that uh, you know when in the 11th house we have a lot of influx and when we have a lot of malefics sometimes we tend to set up very unrealistic goals also for ourselves so the first thing to do is uh set your priorities right see what you want to achieve prioritize properly and then go about achieving your uh, goals working towards your goals so a lot of emphasis on uh, your uh, money as i mentioned a lot of emphasis on family issues especially children so uh take care of that some of you could also uh end up uh, with a new routine right so there are changes uh there are lot of frequent changes because of which you uh end up making a new routine for yourself uh, you know you uh, end up making a new healthcare routine also for yourself so a good change a good period i would say but uh, just be a little realistic and don't go overboard then i move on to the next sign of leo so for leo uh, mars is coming into your 10th house and from there it aspects the uh lagna it aspects the 4th house as well as the 5th house an important transit because mars because mars being a benefic planet for you is coming on to your uh 10th house a very important house the house of our karmas and uh, it is impacting the other kendra bhavas also so it is impacting two kendra bhavas and one trinal house that is the 5th house so here i would say that um the way you go about delivering your duties the way you go about your work there could be changes over there you could get a chance to reflect more pause more reflect more towards how you lead your team how you do your work uh what kind of ways uh, do you think are you know uh, comfortable for you how does it impact you how does it impact your work surroundings so uh creating a lot of work life balance is also something which you'll uh, end up managing so uh, an excellent time to do so working on yourself working on how your work is impacting you uh, how efficient are you how productive are you that is something which i think you will get a good chance to ponder over to reflect over uh, also how you spend your energy towards your home matters towards your domestic matters is also something which you need to take care of your mother's health might require your attention so spending time with your mother mother like figures is also very important and uh, for some this could also be a change in their career profile in their job profile also so there could be a change 
uh, you could be moving into a, a stepping into a different role and mars uh, stay here in the sign of taurus for a long period is a good enough time to trigger in these changes so sometimes you know uh, when the transit is big enough when the transit is long enough it gives the planet a sufficient enough time to deliver its results as well so it could happen in your case as well a good chance for students uh, who are studying so you could uh, take up especially those who are in the technical fields uh, this is an excellent time to uh, take up the courses of your choice you could come across more opportunities as well then i uh, move on to the next sign of virgo so for virgo uh, mars is a malefic planet for you number 1 mars uh, rules the third house as well as the eighth so the uh, malefic houses third is a malefic house eighth is a most malefic house and uh, mars is going to be in the ninth house so a good part is that mars is coming out of the eighth house that eighth house energy is going to simmer down a little bit and it is coming into the ninth house from there it is going to be aspecting the 12th house the third house as well as the fourth so here a lot of uh, emphasis on uh, movement on travel so remember sitting in the ninth it is impacting the third it is impacting the uh, 12th house as well so a lot of chances of movement now movement can be you might wish to take up a pilgrimage you might wish to travel for education uh, you may be making trips to make your to meet your siblings so a lot of uh, movement is there a lot of travel time expenditure on travel is again uh, what i see for you uh, <clears throat> a lot of you will spend their energy their time uh, with their father figure uh, with their father or father figure or with your gurus so uh, spending time with your teacher spending time with your mentor getting their guidance is again something which will really benefit you during this particular time also uh, keep a tab on expenditure because while all this is happening there is going to be an influx of expenditure so expenditure is again something which i see for you uh, there could also be chances of uh, you know money lending happening between you your siblings or you and your close friends so uh, do that uh, do that very carefully as well then i move on to the next sign of libra so for libra uh, this particular transit is happening in the 8th house so mars is coming out of your 7th and moving into your 8th house mars is a mara grah for you coming in the 8th and aspecting the 11th aspecting the 2nd and the 3rd house so this is a challenging this is a tricky position for mars to be in for the libra ascendant it is sitting in one malefic house and impacting the second and the third the marka and another malefic house but the good part is it is also aspecting the 11th house so a lot of malefic energy you know is going to be changing hands over here so what is happening is one uh, how you are going to be managing your finances is something which is going to be a focus area for the libra ascendant so uh, there could be some amount of insecurity which comes in with regard to money uh, there could be some setback some transformation also related to money you could also diversify totally you could also change over uh, the way you are managing your money so i'm not saying that all this is going to be bad all this is negative but there could be a lot of changes mars is in the house of major transformations and it is going to be there for a long time so it has enough time to deliver the results which it is indicating so here uh, you know your uh, portfolio diversification can happen you and your spouse can take up any joint assets your uh, spouse's finances could also be a focus point for you so a lot of running around a lot of mental activity as well with regard to money is what i see though for some of you it is also going to be a very gainful period gainful period in terms of inheritance in terms of money which was stuck for a very long time so family money related issues are going to be even more pronounced right so and those who are looking at inheritance or money stuck in inheritance this is again a time where some traction can also happen for you uh, a lot of emphasis will also come into your relationship with your elder siblings or uh, more connections with your uh, 
friend circle, with your professional circle. So there's a lot of support which you can get from there as well. Then I move on to the uh, next sign of Scorpio. Now for Scorpio, you see the uh, transit is happening in the seventh house. In the seventh house, while Mars comes in over here, it is going to be aspecting the uh, tenth house the lagna as well as the second house right so from here again for scorpio ascendant mars is your lagnesh also and it is going to be looking at the lagna aspecting the lagna it is going to be impacting the kendra bhavas also as well as your house of finance your house of money the second house so a lot of uh, energy a lot of you know i would say a spot of energy is what i see whenever the uh, lagnesh is aspecting the lagna there is a protective layer around the uh, lagna also so while this is happening but mars is remember again a planet of sudden burst of energy sudden results as well so take care of your health be careful while driving do not get into petty fights with your uh, partner with your life partner or with your business partner so while work is happening you know your business partnerships can also see a tumultuous time because of sudden you know impulsive uh, you know actions gestures so that is something which you need to be careful about otherwise this is going to give you a good boost of energy uh, your uh, family wise uh, the connections which you have within your family will also have to be seen take care of your speech take care of uh, you know any impulsive action whatever you feel like doing uh, think over it deliberate over it and then act because uh, here sitting in the 7th house the impact of mars is going to be on you straight away and the scorpio lagna as such is prone to lot of impulsive action prone to being vengeful also so one has to be very careful take care of what you are doing to others how you are behaving with others think about the long term impact first so now i i'll be moving on to the next sign of sagittarius now for sagittarius mars is coming into your 6th house 6th house having an uh, having a malefic over there is somehow good mars is a good planet for you also though it also owns the 12th house but mars is Uh, being the you know lord of a trinal house is sort of auspicious also for sagittarius ascendant but the position of mars here in the 6th a malefic in the 6th house is going to give you a lot of uh, determination a lot of boost in will power to tackle the challenges of life and from here from the 6th house Mars is going to be aspecting the ninth house, the twelfth house, as well as the lagna. So till now, whatever you had been shelving, whatever you had uh, been avoiding, not being uh, being able to work on, not being able to tackle, or somehow lacking courage to tackle some challenges which were uh, there, you know, somewhere in the back of your mind, which you were shelving for a long time. now is the time and mars is going to be there for a long enough period to give you that shot of energy so any legal battle which uh, has been pending for a long time this is a time where resolution can happen and if you are on the right side this is a time where you could be victorious as well if there was anything related to your higher education or education related matters which you were not able to finish till now i think this is a time where uh you can end up things or kind of wrap up things wrap up your projects keep a check on your expenditure also a lot of you will uh feel like taking up a pilgrimage or going to an ashram going to a retreat so do that you know uh, getting into spiritual retreats getting into meditation etc so a lot of uh, you know such energy spiritual energy uh, is what i see getting rekindled in lot of you so good time to exercise that do take care of your health uh, any uh, long uh, pending ailment old ailment which you had related to blood or related to muscles etc uh, this is a time where a good treatment a good uh, you know medical help 
could actually help you in tackling over your uh, medical issues as well. Then I move on to the next sign of Capricorn. Now for Capricorn, uh, Mars comes into your fifth house. It rules over your uh, fourth house as well as your eleventh house, an important planet for you. And being in the fifth house, it is going to be aspecting the eighth house, the eleventh and the twelfth. So being in the fifth, it is aspecting two malefic houses as well and the eleventh house as well. Materially, this could be a good time. Can give you a lot of uh, good results by way of your professional circle, help from your professional circle, help from your relatives, help from your elder siblings, etc. But at the same point in time, this could also lead to chances where you waste away a lot of your energy as well. So this 8th and 12th energy, you know, where Mars is uh, casting an aspect could also, uh, you know, make you uh, lose up a lot of energy, waste a lot of energy, waste a lot of thinking, overthinking sometimes. So that is something which you have to be careful about. In case you are an expectant mother, you are uh, planning on, uh, you know, you are uh, planning a family ahead, uh, go ahead with a lot of medical advice. Uh, Mars is aspecting the 8th house as well. So you got to be a little careful over there. Uh, any long pending medical issues also need to be seen. Right. So uh, that is something which you need to be seeing. Uh, you also need to check your uh, relationship with your children so while a lot of your energy will go in handling your children their affairs their education etc at the same point in time it's important that you become a little patient with your children as well if that qualifies for you otherwise for those of you who are looking at studying themselves who are in that age bracket of studying of picking up higher education etc uh, this could be a time where you get to deal with uh, such issues where you get to deal with a lot of competition Make sure that you remain focused and you do not waste your energy in frivolous affairs. Mars is aspecting the 11th house. So if you uh, put in the required energy, if you go in with the full dedication, this can actually lead to your wish fulfillment as well. Then I move on to the next sign of Aquarius. So for Aquarius, Mars is coming into your 4th house, a Kendra Bhava, and it is aspecting the 7th house another kendra bhava 10th house and the 11th house a very good transit for you mars coming into the fourth could also bring in a lot of focus on land issues on property issues so if you're looking at acquiring some land if you're looking at acquiring some property making some deals this could be a time where you get to crack a deal especially if it is related to your business if it is related to your work Right? So if you are uh, in that business of land and property etc, uh, this could be a good time. Also, uh, a lot of your desires can get fulfilled with the help of your family, with the help of your spouse right now. So remember to balance up this energy of Mars in the fourth house. So do not lose your temper within the house. Do not you know, deal with your domestic issues uh, with a lot of patience. Mars, wherever it comes into your fourth house, materially it might be good, but there could be issues within the family. You could lose temper or, uh, you know, you could be very, very short tempered within the family, within the domestic environment, which can lead, uh, lead to pro problems later on. So that is something which you need to uh, be watchful about. Also with your relationship at, you know, uh, work with your superiors, with your bosses, etc. also. Uh, exercise a bit of uh, patience exercise speaking less uh, then speaking your mind out and regretting later so that could pose problems over there in your work field as well but overall if you take care of your speech this is a good time for material growth then I move on to the next sign the last sign of Pisces so for Pisces Mars is coming into the third house good energy good influx of energy gives you the ability to shoulder on more responsibility take on more more initiatives as such 
so from here mars is going to be aspecting the 6th house the 9th uh, house as well as the 10th house so a lot of new initiatives can be taken with respect to your education you could take up new courses you could learn something new at work you could be given some additional responsibilities your travel time can also increase that is again something which which you'll have to see so a lot of time is spent on traveling a lot of time is spent on uh, planning things as well planning for the future so a lot of activity a lot of uh, you know uh, initiative you get to take towards planning right so uh, uh, planning uh, coordinating uh, with others all these things could come in could come into your lap as extra work also this is a time to take care of your relationship with your siblings with your childhood friends with your neighbors so exercise patience exercise more care and caution while you're dealing with your siblings while you're dealing with your neighbors etc excellent time to take up any new physical routine mars is also aspecting the 6th house so your daily health care routine your daily routine can actually be put on track if you really feel like so a new diet a new exercise routine changing things for the better right so uh, putting uh, you know renewing yourself renewing your energy is something which i see for you for the pisces ascendant so overall this seems to be a good time but make sure that you uh, take up the responsibilities which you're supposed to and take care of your daily routine take care of your uh, you know daily uh, errands also which you manage to do so how you go about expending your daily energy you know finally adds up to your long term goals so this is going to be having a lot of impact on your uh, work wise uh, profile as well right so that was all about the uh, pisces ascendant all the 12 ascendants for that matter and i'll see you soon in my next video till then do take care and god bless you